In this video, we're gonna create a blur shader that we can apply to a sprite directly. Then we're gonna take the base from that and expand it so that we can drag a sprite anywhere onto our scene and blur anything on a particular layer behind that sprite. This can be really useful for things like blurring your background elements. This is specific to projects that are utilizing the 2D renderer pipeline asset, but a lot of the logic in the shader graphs with minimal changes could easily be applied to 3D as well. Ready? Let's go. Okay, so first we're going to create a new sprite lit shader graph and I'll call it Sprite Blur. And in order to get our sprites showing from our sprite renderer component, we need to create an exposed texture 2D property and call it main text, spelled like this exactly. And to actually be able to see it, we need to sample it out. Now we can go ahead and drag the RGBA into the base color here. And let's also drag the alpha into the alpha. Now, basically, in order to get our blur effect, we're offsetting the sprite multiple times on the X and Y axis to basically produce multiple copies of the sprite. This produces an effect that looks like a blur. So we need to add a tiling and offset node to accomplish this and plug that into our UV node in our sample texture. Now let's create a vector two and plug that into our offset here. Now, in order to keep this shader graph nice and neat, let's click and drag over all of these and convert them into a shader graph and I'll call it Blur Sprite Subgraph. So to blur this in the most basic form, we need to show our image once normally, once with the X offset at one and at minus one, and once with the Y offset at one and at minus one. So we're going to have five of these in total. So let's create an exposed float called Blur Amount, and high numbers really don't produce a nice result here, so let's make this a slider between zero and 0.1. Now let's go ahead and multiply that by one on the X and plug that output into the X on our vector two node here. So that's one. Okay, so let's select all of this and control D to duplicate it. And we need four more of these. So we've already offset the X by one. So let's do minus one this time. Great, now we need one copy of the actual normal image with no offset. So let's just get rid of all this here. And that's three. Now we just need to do minus one and plus one for the Y. So plus one here, but this time we'll plug that into the Y instead. And minus one down here and same thing, plug this into the Y instead. Perfect, so now we have five copies of our image. Now we just need to put them back together. So for the vector four output, which is our RGBA, let's add all of those together. Awesome, now we have to do the same thing with the alphas. And finally, let's plug that into our base color and this into the alpha. Back in our scene, let's right click on our shader here and create a new material. Doing it this way just ensures that we create a new material with this shader already applied to it. And if we apply that material to our player, you'll notice that our player is all kinds of messed up. And the reason for that is because we added all of this color data together. And so on the parts where they are overlapping, they literally add more color on top of what's already there. So yes, we wanna add all of these together, but we don't wanna add intensity to the colors. We want the colors to remain the same. So what we need to do is take the final output for our summed RGBAs and divide them by five. And it's five because we have five of them added up in total. Okay, and we need to do the same with the alpha as well. Great, once that's done, your character should look perfectly normal again. And we can drag this slider around to blur our player. Awesome. If you want to improve the quality of the blur, you just add more samples in there. You could make this a two and add four more samples, or you could try one on the X and one on the Y and try different combinations there. But keep in mind that more samples equals more performance costs. I'm going to leave ours as is. So that's a blur shader for just a singular sprite. Now let's create a second shader to apply blur to the entire environment. First, let's duplicate our subgraph and I'll call it blur screen subgraph. Now let's open it up and we need to make two changes to this subgraph. First, we do not wanna use main text. We're going to use what's called camera sorting layer texture. And once that's done, let's plug in a screen position node into the UV on the tiling and offset node because we literally want the sprite to show what the camera would be seeing behind it. So where it's positioned on the screen makes sense. So now let's duplicate our sprite blur shader and call it screen blur. 
So first let's get rid of all the subgraphs and let's get rid of all the main texts. And let's create a new property called camera sorting layer texture. And again, this needs to be spelled this way exactly because this performs a special function in Unity. So it looks for this particular string. Also very important, make sure it is not exposed. Now add in our blur screen subgraphs, five of them, and plug in those textures we just created. Now we can re-hook up the vector two nodes. And finally re-hook up all of the add nodes. And I don't want lights to affect this, so let's make this a sprite unlit. And one last thing I forgot is we don't need the alpha for this particular shader. So go back into the blur screen subgraph, get rid of this connection here, and highlight our output node here and delete the float since we don't need that. And finally go back to the screen blur and we can get rid of all these extra add nodes and the divide and float node all at the end here. We don't need to touch anything with the alpha for this shader. So to get this working, let's create a nice big sprite. And create a new material using that shader and apply that material to this sprite. And it's not working just yet. First, we need to put this object on its own sorting layer. So create a new layer called camera sorting layer and apply that layer to this sprite. Now we need to find our universal render pipeline asset and then from there find our 2D renderer asset and go down to this camera sorting layer texture drop down here and change it to default. Now really it should look like there's nothing there in the scene at all, but if you change the blur slider, you're able to blur your entire environment using this sprite. Now there's one final thing because this is going to blur everything. Whether you're using an orthographic or perspective camera, its position on the Z axis does not matter. It's just gonna draw everything and blur it, which is probably, at least in most cases, not what we want. So we need to add the ability to only blur a specific layer. And the best way to do this is with a second camera, <laughs> which triggers me a little bit. I really hate having multiple cameras, but sometimes for certain effects, it is necessary in Unity. So for mine here, I'm just going to apply blur to my background image here. By the way, real quick, if you like the art assets that you see in this game, I'm gonna leave a link for you to download them in the description below, and you can use them in any way you want, even commercially, they're just our gift to you, and I hope you enjoy. So first, we need to create a layer for what we want to blur, and in my case, I'm just going to blur the background, so let's make sure that our background sprite is on the background layer. Now, in our main camera, open up the calling mask and deselect the background layer, and our background should disappear when we do that. Now we're going to create a new camera as a child of our main camera, and I'll call it background cam. Let's delete the audio listener on this background cam since we only ever want one audio listener in the scene. And I'm using perspective cameras, so I'm going to set my field of view to be the same on both cameras. Now the background camera, let's change its calling mask to only draw the background layer. Now if you're using 2D lights like I am, everything goes black. That's because currently my background camera is rendering on top of my main camera and there are no lights on the background layer. So let's add a new light and set its layer as background. My background is a tad dark, so I'll add one more light just so we can see it a little bit better. And now we can see just our background. So we need a way to make sure that our main camera is drawn on top of our background camera. So go back to our main camera and change its render type to overlay. Then in the background camera, which is set to base, go down to stack and add our main camera here. Now everything is kind of just back to the way it was before all this camera nonsense, but that's just because we didn't change the layer on our screen blur object here. Once we set that layer properly, now you can see it's only blurring the background. And there you go. I hope you found this video helpful. Please consider leaving a like if you did and subscribe if you wanna see a new tutorial every Thursday. Also, if you want access to all our videos early or get monthly alpha builds of whatever commercial project we're working on, then please consider supporting us on Patreon like all of these awesome people. I wanna give a very special thank you to our Hall of Fame patrons, Jakob Yandok, Zondra Kessler, Darren Perrine, Throbbing Wind, Fontaine Waite, and Couch, as well as our early access patrons, Zioma and Ken Wade. 
If you choose to support us on Patreon, you can get early access to all our videos, monthly alpha builds, and more.